What's up, freaks? It's Steve here, and we are talking about failure. I just had a big failure of my own today, and I just want to talk about it because I posted earlier about a three-mile run I was about to go on. My goal was to get it under 19 minutes and 52 seconds, and I fucking failed. I missed it by 10 seconds, so 20 minutes and two seconds. The goal was 19 minutes, 52 seconds. And that's a failure, that is a failure. I've ha I set this goal the last time that I did this run, the 20 minutes and 52 seconds, the fastest time I've, I've done in over 20 years, that was a, a couple of months ago, where I actually did a live video on here on Facebook where I had the camera on me the entire time while I was running and got 20 minutes and 52 seconds, which pisses me off because that basically shows the difference between internal motivation and external motivation. So because there was a camera there and on me, the last time that I did that is the, is the fastest time I did at, at 19.52. And today, I intentionally didn't want to have to put a camera on there. I wanted just to have use internal motivation of saying, all right, I'm going to beat this time that I had to have a camera running the last time. And I failed it. I fucked it up. 20 minutes and two seconds. So, and this is a failure that I've done. So that's been a couple of months since I hit that time and I haven't beaten it since. I don't do three miles all the time. Sometimes I'll just do a mile or a 10 minute sprint or a one mile sprint or an hour jog or something like that so it's not like i'm doing a three mile i'm not even doing a three mile every week it's different all the time i do different kinds of runs but i failed this now three mile thing for about three weeks in a row a couple weeks ago of whatever had some injuries tweaks there's no excuses whatever i tried to run it i started off too hard and gassed the fuck out this was like last week when i tried this also and had a shitty time had a minute like 21 minutes it took me totally started off too hard went out went out at like 10 miles an hour to try and just get a head start on it down to nine and a half nine miles an hour gas the hell out plus i had that chinese that 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 that, that virus thing that whatever trying to break through into my immune system at the same time so i fucked up i went out thinking all right i'm gonna go out hard on this three mile i gassed out so today i said all right i'm gonna go a little slower I'm going to start off real slow and save some in the tank for, this, for the second half, for the final mile. And I'm going to go real hard on the final mile and, and make up for the time there. So I start off a little, little slow intentionally at like 8 miles an hour, then 8.5 miles, 8.5. About 8.7, 8.8 miles an hour was where I was averaging it at. Then about 9 miles an hour. Last mile comes up. All right, let's kick it up to 10 miles an hour. Last half a mile. 10 and a half miles an hour the last lap and a half about so a quarter mile a little more than a quarter mile put it on 12 miles an hour all out sprint the faster the treadmill will go i, I knew i should have went on this other other it's not a treadmill so that's a set this is the setback of the treadmill put it on 12 miles an hour some treadmills go to 15 miles an hour some go to 12 i was on the one that only goes to 12 miles an hour so i had to cap it out at 12 miles an hour sprinting for the last lap and a half the last little more than quarter mile and missed the fucking time by 10 seconds I fucked it up I misjudged it and and that was that was this morning that was I don't even know how many hours ago it's four that was four or five hours ago after that was after I was done lifting I did a full out a 90 minute lifting session and then went for the run and did some legs but that's whatever I usually get a better run after I work legs as long as I don't hammer the legs too hard so I did some leg work to get them ready get them warmed up and I fucking failed for like the fourth time in a row failed and it's pissed me off it like eats me up in my stomach makes me want to freaking puke but it's part of the game failure is part of the game and you're gonna fail often you're gonna fail hard and guess what you need to move the fuck on you need to not bitch and moan about it use it to make you better what tyson come here so he hears me talking about it he, he can't he just heard me say that i failed so he wants so tyson what i was saying was i failed on a run today I failed. I was supposed to beat a time and I missed it by 10 seconds. So I'm, I, I'm a failure on my run today. What do you think about that? You still did good, but you always need to learn from your mistakes. Keep practicing, working hard. Like I do in handball at school. What, I, what happens to handball? I, like, I get out maybe 10, 15 times and I just keep going. Yeah, and you got, you've gotten better? Did you ever play handball before you started this year in school? Nope. You ever heard of handball? So you weren't very good in the beginning? Nope. So you would get out all the time? 
Now, now when now I just started, I got out like maybe 30, 40 times. And now what? It's, now you're better? Getting better? Much better. So what should I do? What's my steps I should take since I freaking failed today? Practice, work hard, and keep getting better. So I shouldn't give up? Should. Shouldn't give up? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Sounds like a plan. Now I have my coach that gave me my plan that's set in place. So here's the thing. Fuck 20 minutes and 52 seconds. Or no, 19 minutes and 52 seconds. That's just unacceptable. The new goal is under 18 fucking minutes. I'm going to beat this by two minutes. I don't know what time. I got to come up with a time frame. It ain't going to happen in a fucking week because that's dropping by two minutes. But I'm going to make it fucking happen. That's 10 miles an hour for three miles straight. Less than 10 miles an hour. Under 20 minutes is not nine miles an hour for the entire three miles. You need to average nine miles an hour to get under 20 minutes. To get 18 minutes is 10 miles an hour straight through for three straight miles. That's a, a freaking pace. Now, of course, world record paces and, you know, the, the world record marathon is two hours. Two hours, the world record marathon. So you break that down 26 miles, chop it in, in to miles an hour. That's 13 miles per hour they're doing for 26 miles straight in a marathon. So that's just fucking insane and not even human. So I'm not claiming to be all that, but for you have to set your own personal goals, right? So it's about are you better today than you were yesterday? And your goal, every day you should be thinking in your freaking head. I'm better than I was yesterday, but I'm not good enough for tomorrow. You need to keep thinking to get better and not letting your fuck-ups and your failures, even something that's as stupid, this is just a treadmill, it's just a run. But that's the way it's, you should be. Like You should have that competitive nature and you're competitive with, not forget the rest, of, of course you want to be competitive with the rest of the world, but it starts with yourself, getting yourself better every freaking day. And if you're always making yourself get better every day and you're competitive with yourself, guess what? You're going to be competitive and probably dominating everyone doing whatever the hell you're doing. So I failed today. And only I could, and no one would have known about this at all. Just on a treadmill, by myself, headphones on, listening to some '90s gangster shit. No one would have known. But it's fuck. It was it eating me inside. And I, and I also posted this before I ran, in, intentionally, for an integrity check. Which is fucking stupid that I even have to do that, right? It starts to think you start feeling weakness just by the fact that I have to do an integrity check. The fact that the last time I did that run was when I had a live camera on me the entire running a live facebook boring ass video just watching me run and huff and puff like fucking getting out of breath and shit pisses me off that i even had to do that pisses me off that i had to do an integrity check on facebook but this is the way it goes right everyone all none of us are freaking perfect you see all the bullshit out there all the instagram all the fake fucking lives that are out there all the fake out there a lot of it's fake a lot of it's fraudulent a lot of it's bullshit and all everyone out there that acts like their life is perfect, everything is so great. Guess what? They're fucking failing regularly, except they're covering it up, lying about it, cheating the system. Fuck that. Accept your failures. Bra embrace your failures. Fail 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 failure, when it really comes down to it, failure has been my college education. I never spent a day in college. Of course, I spent my years in the Marine Corps. That was my college. But even more than that, failure has been my college education. The Marine Corps has been my college education. Jail has been my college education. But failure in all those areas, in everywhere, and still continuing to this day, obviously, today, on the fucking treadmill. Failure has been my education. You learn from it. You learn a lot about yourself. Learn a lot about where your strengths are, what your weaks are, what you need to do. Like, fuck. The, the fucked up part is, I guarantee if I had a video, if, there was, if I was being videotaped doing that, I would have beaten the time. I would have started off at a stronger pace. I wouldn't have crumbled under the freaking pressure. I wouldn't have ran out of time. I ran out of time at the end. Nothing I could, I, nothing I could do about it. It was impossible for me to get to that time, to that under the time because I was at 12 miles an hour. I was capped out. The treadmill wouldn't go any freaking faster. So you learn a lot about yourself in failure, even the stupid little things. Get, get those failures. Fail hard. Fail fast. Fail often. It's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you sharper as long as you go in it with the right, right mindset, not the victim mindset of boo fucking who, poor little me, that... I just can't do anything right. Whatever I do, I, I screw it up and I fail at. Fuck that. Fail fast, fail forward, fail freaking hard. Fail often, all the time. But now if you just keep failing at the same shit over and over again, that's an issue, that's a problem. You can't just make an excuse. Oh, it's, it's okay, it's okay to fail. It is okay to fail, but it's not okay to not try to get better. It's not okay to learn from it. It's not okay to make your weaknesses, turn your weaknesses and flip that shit and turn it into a strength. 
Use your failures as a fucking superpower in the future to, to make yourself a, a superhero. Like, I could sit here and make excuses about why I suck as a runner. And I should be, I should suck as a runner. First of all, all right, there's a lot of reasons why I, I shouldn't be a good runner. So, first is, and these are excuses, and you can see on here, fucking no excuses. It's going to say backwards. I had to tattoo it on so I could see it all the fucking time. But, yeah, I can make excuses. So, I, I can't get a lot of air into my into my nose. I've had my nose, my nose has been broken a few times, never been fixed. That's why I'm this ugly, hairy, strange looking, bald headed freak that you see in front of you. So I've had my nose broken a couple times, a couple times an accident, a couple times I deserved it, a couple times in training, sometimes in sparring, just had my nose broken a few times. So a lot of air doesn't get in there. But, but even before that, I had breathing problems from my entire childhood, my entire childhood. Imagine whenever you're in a car, whenever you're going somewhere, having cigarettes Lucky Strike cigarettes smoked around you nonstop every single day from the day you're born until however however long. I don't even know how long. So breathing in those unfiltered, nasty fucking Lucky Strikes for like 19 years of my life or whatever it is from a little freaking baby. Like you see someone smoking around a kid, you should walk up to them and fucking bitch slap them for being a dumbass. I see it all the time. It's fucking disgusting. People smoking around little kids. So. That could be my first excuse, but these aren't excuses. These are the things that made me a, 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 it made me have strong lungs and good cardio and good conditioning. I took that stuff and said, all right, I can't breathe. My breathing sucks because I'm genetically fucked up because of breathing in cigarettes my entire life. So I could sit and say, okay, I could just be fucking fat and lazy and sit on my ass and excuse not to get in shape, excuse not to run because I get short-winded quick. Fuck that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work a fucking thousand times harder than anyone else. I'm going to run my ass off. I'm going to do sprints. I'm going to do long distance, short distance. I'm going to jump, run, fucking bounce, cartwheel. Whatever the fuck I can do to build up my lung capacity, to get my freaking heart and lungs and master that shit. And that's what, when, when I started really running when I was younger. And then, of course, we're going into the Marine Corps. You had to get tested on three miles, which the best score you can get was 18 minutes on a three mile. So... That's why my, that's my new goal now is to get back to that score that I haven't done since I was 19 years old. So 10 years ago. I mean, I was 19 years old. And that was a score that, to get 100 points in the Marine Corps. But even then, I said, fuck that. I'm going to be the best fucking runner in this platoon in when I was in boot camp. And I was until the final PFT. And some, some fucking kid beat me in the final PFT. Because it's, it's fucked up when you're a decent runner. When it comes time to train running a couple days a week and someone has to sit by, sit back and watch the gear and watch the rifles. I forget what it was called. Maybe just rifle watch. You sit back and watch all the gear while everyone runs and you rotate who watches it. I was the best runner in the platoon fucking blazing fast on the three miles that they would let me, they would have me sit and watch the rifles and watch the gear for those last couple weeks because some people were struggling with their three mile run. They needed to get better. So they had me sit back since I was a fucking decent runner. And guess what? The fucking test comes, the final PFT comes out, and I didn't even get 18 fucking minutes on the final PFT in boot camp. I did like 18.23 or 18.33. I don't remember the exact number, but I know I didn't get 18 minutes. I was getting 18 minutes all the time in training, and then I didn't get it on the final PFT. I was like, not deconditioned, but I just missed too many runs in the last few weeks from doing the freaking, I was a platoon leader, or a squad leader, sorry, for squad leader. And missed too many runs coming down to it in the in the home stretch. And I didn't even get 100 points on my final PFT. So I consider that a failure too. But all this stuff, I could have just made excuses. So listen, I'm not meant to be a runner. I have horrible freaking lungs. I've been breathing in lucky strikes. So imagine being trapped in a car. Like say we're going to my grandmother's house. We're going from Rockland County to Yonkers. That's like with traffic, especially Christmas time, whatever. On the weekend, there's going to be some traffic. It's, it's be like a 45-minute drive. It could be an hour drive. There's some traffic going over the Tappan Zee Bridge, whatever the fuck that bridge is called now. Going over the Tappan Zee Bridge, trapped in a car in the wintertime, all the windows up, six kids in a car with nonstop lucky, smike, lucky strikes being smoked the entire ride. Imagine that. And the windows aren't, are, are up because plus it's winter. If you put the windows down, you're going to freeze your ass off because guess what? There wasn't going to be heat going on in that car because that would waste too much gas and too much money. So just breathing in that shit fucked up my breathing for my entire life. So my breathing's been fucked up. And I don't really talk about it much because guess what? I don't care. I knew my breathing is fucked up. So I said, I'm going to just make that my strength. I'm going to use conditioning and cardio. I'm going to flip the script, change the, the, the script and flip the switch on shitty cardio, shitty breathing and, and just make it 
a, a strength, make it a superpower. And still, I'm not the, not the best runner in the world, but pretty decent. Times are getting pretty decent, getting it like today, twenty a failure of 20 minutes and two seconds. Sure, there's a pretty decent time. I failed the time I wanted to, but also when you fail, you got to think, you know what? That's still pretty fucking good. Let's say you were trying to save a million dollars in a certain amount of time, whatever amount of time. You're trying to save a million dollars. The time came up and you only saved $886,000. Does that sound like a failure to you? You failed in getting a million dollars, but you know what? You got to give yourself some credit and be like, you know what? I did pretty fucking good. That's a still pretty good chunk of change. So I still did a good time on the run today, although it was a failure. And although I will fucking crush that three-mile run, I will beat that time in a week from now. Guarantee it that I'll beat that time. Or I will die on that treadmill. I will die a week from today, fucking Monday. I'll do that run again on Monday, a week from today. And I guarantee I will beat that fucking time of, of 19 minutes. 50. I will die. I will die. I'd rather ha I would die before I quit because because you know what you know what happens you get to a certain point there's no one watching you're by yourself and the little inner bitch comes starts coming out of you you're running on the treadmill you're fucking gasping for air your legs your knees are feeling a little sore whatever and you just tap on the speed down just for a couple seconds to get a breather you didn't even fucking need it and I did that a couple times today you start negotiating with that inner bitch that's in your head and you start negotiating with it and you start even just by Lowering it down one notch, that's like quitting. A freaking little mini quitter. So guess what? I will I will beat that fucking time. I'm not going to put any live videos. I don't want external motivation. I want it to be just on your own. You need to learn. There's a time when you need external motivation. There is time. All of us need external motivation at some point, at some time. But you need to also be able to generate internal motivation. Because you don't always have mommy and daddy or the coach or the mentor, the guide, whoever to come and guide you and push you and pressure you all the time. You need to come up with internal motivation sometimes. So don't always rely on some outside source, outside forces to push you in the right direction. So I'm gonna do this a week from today and I will tell you this, either I will beat 20 minutes, or no, fuck that, 19 minutes and 52 seconds, less than that, or I will die. I'd rather be fucking dead than quit. I'd rather my kids have, have a no father and a, a dead father than a father that's a fucking quitter. That's how serious it is. That's how much this disgusts me about this failure today. And I would do that in a week. Now, eight, I won't get the 18 minutes in a week, but I will get the 18 minutes. I'll come up with a time. I got to think of a semi-realistic time and then cut that time frame in half and figure out what that's going to be. And I'll share that with you when I come up with it, whatever that time ends up being. So the point of this video, lots of points of this video, lots of take-home nuggets. Learn to fail. Learn to fail hard. Learn to not fear failing. When you do fail, when you do fuck stuff up, and this was nothing serious. This is just a run, right? It's nothing serious to me. It's fucking serious because it was a failure. But you screw something up, own up to that shit. Don't make excuses. Don't talk about anyone else or even if it's not even your fault. You do something that's someone's, completely someone else's fault that maybe involved you. Your answer should not be, oh, well, this person, this and this person did this and this. No, you should be thinking, all right, I fucked up. I should have helped that person do this. Take ownership of everything. Take a responsibility for everything in your freaking life. Everything that you're connected to. Don't ever put shit off on someone else. Don't ever blame someone else. I can sit here and blame my father for smoking Lucky Strikes from the literally the day I was born, probably inside the hospital, on the ride home from the hospital when I'm a little fucking alien raisin baby going home from the hospital. I could blame my father for that, why I failed this run today. I could blame my genetics that I have that I'm just a hairy fucking beast. I do need to shave the nose hairs, I'm telling you, it's crazy. I gotta get rid of that. I bet y'all, I bet you just that's all it takes is just shaving some of the nose hairs and I'll be able to breathe better and run better. I could make all those excuses about why I failed this run today. But guess what? I just negotiated with the inner bitch. I crumbled under the pressure. I didn't have external motivation pushing me and I failed. I could have trained harder. Probably the last couple weeks that I ran, if I would have just pushed myself a little harder, got an extra run in, did a little more weren't wasn't so cautious and afraid in the beginning of today that I was going to gas out so many different reasons like stop blaming other people for shit let's say I don't know you're working on a project at work and there's three of you doing something and one of you fucks it up completely on their task at three different tasks let's just say one of you one of them fucks it up completely and the supervisor or whatever manager says oh what happened here this got this thing got fucked up guess what should happen Guess what should happen? It should be a race between those three people and the supervisor and the manager. It should be a fucking race to who is going to claim responsibility for fucking that up. All of them, anyone involved should be like, they should be battling, pushing each other over, knocking each other over to, to claim responsibility for 
why this task didn't get done. Even though only one person specifically fucked up their their task. Those other two people that were working with them should have been like, yep, we should I should have made sure they clearly understood it. They knew what it was. It's my fault. That's that's why they did it wrong. Even though they had nothing to do with it, they didn't touch that section, that segment, whatever whatever the hell the situation we're talking about. It should be a race to who's going to claim responsibility. Not, oh, it's him. Oh, it's them. Oh, it's, it's this. It's just excuses, excuses, excuses. No fucking excuses in any situation, ever. None. There should be a race on any task, any job, anything that goes on involving more than one person. Anyone involved. So in that situation, all four people should be fighting and arguing. They should be arguing to like the death of taking responsibility, taking ownership of who fucked up, why the task didn't get done. Because when it comes down to it, you didn't accomplish the mission. Does it really matter whose fault it is? It's all of your fault. Should have been looking out for each other, having each other's back, making sure each other understood what the task was, understood how to accomplish the task, how to, how to deal with it, knew what their role was, responsibility was, make sure they clearly knew how to do it, make sure they didn't need any help with it, didn't need any extra assistance. If you nail your part in a, ta- in, a, in, a, in a mission and someone else doesn't nail their part, it's not their fault. It's fucking your fault. You had your shit down. You should have been looking over. You should have been thinking and, and be well-versed in all different areas and make sure. I don't even know how I got into this with failure, but this is just what we're talking about. So take take responsibility for sh- your own shit, your own failures, your own fuck-ups, and also even for other people's shit. Take responsibility for everything, everything that happens, everything that crosses your path that even has one drop to do with you that you have any bit of your t- a touch on. Take responsibility for it. Take ownership for it. It's your fucking fault. No one else's. Stop making excuses for it. Stop blaming other people. That's like a bitch move. That's again your inner inner bitch creeping out. Trying to cover your own ass so that you don't look bad. Worried about that you're not going to look good and you want to take credit for the good stuff. Oh, but I did my job the right way. I did my part, my part in the in the mission, in the task. But guess what? The task didn't you failed the fucking mission. Who cares if you did your part? So you want recognition for succeeding in one of your tasks while the team failed. That is not teamwork. That is not a fucking indivi- that's not even a that's not even a fucking man. Or a human. That's a that's a bitch. That's a little bitch is what that is. So take responsibility for every fucking thing in your life. Every failure. Don't blame anyone. No matter how much fault it is. No matter how much fault you could possibly put on someone. Like you can go into a court case and have a, a nailed down case about why something was done wrong. Why something wasn't done the right way. I don't care. You take responsibility for it. It's my fault. Whose fault is it? Everyone's hand should be in the air. Anyone involved. Every fucking person's hand should be in the air about whose fault it is when something goes wrong. Not pointing fingers and blaming each other like a bunch of mother, bunch of bunch of bitch ass motherfuckers. Seriously, this shit gets me worked up a little bit. Anyway, I've been babbling for quite a long time, so I'm gonna sign off here. Just don't let your failures drag you down. Let them fucking motivate you. Use the failure as a weapon, as a suit. This 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 failure is a superpower. Me fucking this run up today. This is a superpower. You have no clue the conditioning and the cardio that I will have after this. Is going to be ridiculous. So use your failures, use your fuck ups, use your mistakes, use your errors, use all the fucked up shit that ever happened in your life as a superpower. Flip the sh- flip that shit. Change the freak. Change the story. Change the narrative in your life. You can change where, what direction that story goes. What what the next chapter of that book looks like. So stop fucking around. Don't be a little bitch. Get your shit together. Because you have the potential to, and you probably are, you are fucking awesome, no excuses, Tyson, anything you want to finish off with, hey, you want to finish off, come here, the battery's dying, so, go, no, excuses, very, very normal children, I can't imagine where they get it from, I will talk to you later, no excuses.